testing the new Nosram 8100 1S battery. It's the uh, same as the LRP one, which will be blue. And um, comparing it to ones that I've already tested, uh, the IP, the Core, the Phantom, and others, uh, to see if it's better, worse, or the same. And uh, I can do a full discharge, see how the power stands up under load, uh, compare the voltage under load, high current discharge, and compare it to the others. One thing that uh, I've noticed with all this new uh, batteries for 2017 is the weight. They all seem to be about the same, but this one uh, is slightly heavier, 158.5 grams whereas all the other ones I've checked uh, came out at um, only a hundred and about 151 uh, the Phantom 157 152 so it's slightly heavier than the others uh, still using four millimeter uh, connectors uh, but um, they don't go all the way through uh, but um, it's the same size, they're all the same size. Anyway, I'll discharge it and see if it's better, worse, or the same as all the others. Charging the Nosram 8100 1S battery on the iCharger uh, using a balance lead connection. Uh, although it's only 1S, you can use a balance lead on the first two pins so you can get a milliohm reading. So, if we just have a look, the milliohm reading is uh, 2 milliohms, uh, which is pretty typical for a battery um, these days. Uh, so, it's high quality. 2 milliohms on charge is just finishing uh, 4.2. Uh, using the balance lead uh, method of charging a 1S, you will get a, a full voltage because it measures the voltage through these two wires uh, plus and minus which is the actual voltage it's measuring and there's no voltage loss in the power leads while it's charging fully charged the 8100 NOS RAM 1S so I'm going to take it off and put it on the uh, 1S uh, discharger as I did before and record all the results uh, on discharge this uh, is 35 amp discharger I've got all the results from previous uh, tests on this chart from uh, discharging from the beginning right to the end and measure the capacity and the voltage it holds. So I'm going to write them down as soon as we start. A second charge fully of the Nosram 8100 1S battery. It's fully charged so Let's put it onto the discharger straight away. Connect the negative. And I'll read all the voltages off as it goes. It's gone to 3.76 and then dropped straight back. To 3.72. At 600 milliamps, it's still 3.65. Just coming to the end of the discharge to stop it at 3, which is there. Made 7,828 at 3.0 volts. So just check the battery's temperature 33 degrees. And I can put it back onto the charger and just show that it has a slightly in lower internal resistance when it's hot. Charging at 10 amps, balance charge 1S. 1.3 milliohms, so when hot and that uh, was 2.0 milliohms when ambient 
as it cools down the milliohms will actually go up. The results of the test on the uh, Nosram 8100 1S 110C battery I'm comparing it to um, the others such as the Core RC Pro 8000 and the Phantom uh, 7800 Type R if you look at the results, uh, I've done uh, two passes to check the voltage under high current discharge and uh, compared it to all the others, testing it on the same equipment. Um, if you look at the uh, voltage after 600 milliamps discharge, 3.65 for the Nosram and the, for instance, Intellect LIHV battery. But um, these older batteries, the Core, the Phantom and the Intellect SHV, all hold a higher voltage. And then if you look towards the end of, say, a race, 3000 milliamps is used. These ones are holding 352, and these new ones are 345. So the older ones are holding better voltage. And they all go up to about 8000 milliamps when they finish. Um, so, what's the difference? The weight, all about the same in the 150 range. The Nosram was 158, slightly heavier, not much. So what, um, what, what should you buy? So I recommend you buy the old ones, because look at the price. In the UK, the Nosram recommended about £60. The Phantom, 50 The Core, 40 And the Intellect older SHV is only 38 um, I'm not sure if you can still buy that one, but you can buy the Core 40. It's cheaper and gives a better performance on my test equipment. 